Hey guys, what is up? Dave here, coming back to you with a brand new video on the channel. And today's video is about Epic versus Google in trying to decide if the Play Store was basically like a monopoly and a whole bunch of other stuff. It took me a very long time to find this form because I'm not a lawyer. I'm not anything of the sort. I don't know hardly anything about laws. Uh, I am your average American that thinks they know there's personal rights, and I have no idea, but at least I admit it. In this case, though, I wanted to just go through, see what the jury, I haven't looked at this at all yet, see what the jury's 11 questions were, and see if I agree with their statements or not. Because I have a feeling that I don't, and that the people that were on the jury for this, I don't think they would understand technology or Android or anything like that. So... Let's go through this. I'm going to see what I can, you know, my opinions on the findings, and we'll go from there. I do think it's good that Epic overall won against Google. I think it's good that they also won against Apple, but I don't know. It just doesn't, it, for some, there's something in the back of my head that says I kind of don't actually agree maybe with the jury, so I'll leave this in the uh, comments down below, or Description if you want to go over this yourself and maybe make your own video. So question number one. Did Epic prove by a prominence of evidence and in accordance with instructions given to you the existence of a relevant antitrust market? They marked yes. So all of these things are going to be worded in such a strange way. <laughs> The way that I take this question is, did Epic prove that basically Google is trying to do more than they need to, I guess? Uh, something like that. So it's kind of monopolization is what they're basically asking about in majority of these questions because Apple ta or Google takes 30% of all in-app purchases. Epic wanted to add an extra 30% to the cost of items in the app for in-app purchases. And Google also has um, a clause for posting your apps on Google Play that you can't do sales externally, um, even though there are plenty of games and apps that do it. <laughs> so, <clears throat> excuse me. Obviously, Google is working in an antitrust market. Any major app is going to get caught up in this and going to be removed from the Play Store because they're trying to circumvent Google's fees and stuff like that. So let's move on to the next question. So the answer no, go to question six. Ooh, I answered yes, so we're going to go to two. If you answered yes to question one, Please specify each relevant product market and associated geographic market that Epic proved. So, ooh, this is where it's going to get spicy. <laughs> uh, spicier than the soup I had for dinner. So one, Android app distribution market worldwide excluding China. Uh, for you uh, FRP people, keep that in mind. Um, Android in-app billing service for digital goods and service transactions, worldwide excluding China. So I don't agree with the Android app distribution market because exactly what Epic did when uh, Fortnite was removed from the Play Store, they just provided a download to the APK on their website. Also, you can have third-party markets very easily installed on your Android device. If I open up my Android phone right now, you guys can't see it, but I have three different app marketplaces on my phone. I have Aurora Store, I have F-Droid, and I have TapTap. All three of those are third-party app stores. I don't even have the Play Store on my phone. It is possible to use third-party app distribution systems. I can go on TapTap Tap right now and search for Fortnite, and it's there. TapTap Tap is separate from the Google Play Store. They have their own app market. They have their own website. You put your app on the website yourself for their market to disperse it to new people. So arguing that the app distribution is monopolized is, in my head, false. 
with the in-app billing, it's like I said previously, the terms of service for the Play Store for your app to be on there is all in-app purchases have to go through Google. If they catch you doing anything off uh, app or trying to circumvent, they remove you from the Play Store. That's sketchy, but it is possible to do. But since Fortnite's so big, it's not like they can circumvent that. They have to follow the rules, and it is a tad sketchy that Google doesn't give you the option elsewhere. But if everybody easily had an option to do it elsewhere, then Google would lose a massive amount of money as far as hosting the Play Store and stuff like that and would probably slowly turn into Apple where they have to charge you like 200 bucks a year just to put your apps on the freaking App Store. All right, question three. Did Epic prove uh, that Google willing willfully acquired or maintained monopoly power by engaging in anti-competitive conduct in any market that you specified in the response of question two. I technically say no because of, again, this, but the only reason it has to be yes is because they have the stuff in their terms that you can't sell stuff off market. So technically, no matter what, you have to answer yes to that. If you answered yes to three, specify. Android app distribution market, we already went over that. Android in-app billing services for digital goods and service transactions. They have to be done through the market. We've gone over that. So, question five. If you answered yes to three, did Epic prove that it was injured as a result of Google's violation of the antitrust laws? No. And they probably did. <laughs> they probably did. Actually, that's a really stupid question. Um... Do I think it actually hurt Epic Games? I don't think so. <laughs> Look how big Epic Games is. Uh, they're worth a lot of money. How much is Epic Games worth? Hold on. Now, keep in mind, when you see these figures, it's overall assets combined together and everything. So they estimate that Epic is worth about $31.5 to $37.5 billion. So realistically, do I think it hurt Epic? Hell to the no. <laughs> oh, hell no. <laughs> Continue to question six. Unlawful restraint of trade. <coughs> Excuse me. Did Epic prove that Google entered into one or more agreements that unreasonably restrained trade in relevant antitrust market? Yes, because you have to do stuff through their own in-app purchase market system regardless if you want to keep your app on the google play store so yeah they probably did prove it and that's how google acts yes uh, sorry i cracked my knuckles out of habit i don't know if you could hear that question seven Ooh. if you answered yes to six kind of have to um even though it is possible to do it without you have to because of google's terms if you answered yes to question six, which of the agreements did you find to be unreasonable restraints of trade in accordance to the instructions given to you? DDA agreements. I don't know what that is. <laughs> uh, agreements with Google's alleged competitors or potential competitors under Project Hug or Game Velocity program. Ooh. Okay. Agreements with OEMs that sell mobile devices, including MADA and RSA agreements. Sure, we'll just go with that. I don't know what any of that means. So <laughs> if you answered yes to six, you have to. Um, Android app distribution market and in Android in-app billing services. Again, tap, tap, Aurora store. Aurora store emulates the Play Store. So I guess that's not really a third-party market. TapTap is a third-party market. F-Droid is a third-party market. F-Droid is very similar to like, almost like Cydia. I could go make an F-Droid repository, and I've really thought about it for like APK mods, but at the end of the day, it's not really worth it. <laughs> so I don't really make mods anymore. Um, Android app distribution market, I argue against this point, but again... You have to do this. Like, there's so many games that I play on my phone. Full disclosure, I know it's a game for children. 
That sounds really bad. I probably should have said the name of the game first. Not talking Roblox or Minecraft. Um, I recently downloaded Lego Hill Climb Racing. Brand new game. So much freaking fun. I have finished all the career mode races, so to speak. I wish there was multiplayer in it like the other Hill Climb Racers. But like it's such a fun game. But because of um, in-app purchases, I cannot... Uh, being locked to the Google Play Store, I cannot unlock one of the campaign things because it's locked behind a paywall that I can't access because I don't have Google services on my phone like everybody in China. So question nine. Did Epic prove that it was injured as a result of Google's violation of the antitrust laws? They probably proved it. Let's go with it, honestly. Yeah, just yeah. Question 10. Did Epic prove that Google unlawfully tied the use of Google Play Store to the use of Google Play billing? They kind of do. Yeah, they Honestly, yes, they very much do. Not saying kind of about it. They very much do, and it's because of forcing in-app billing as part of the terms of use of the Google Play Store. I understand probably, I think, why Google does it, or at least I like to think I understand why Google does it, but at the same time, it's Google. All they want to do is data firm us anyway. Uh, and final question. Did Epic prove that it was injured as a result of Google's violation of the antitrust laws? So <laughs> it's kind of just the same questions a lot of the times over and over because you need to double check people on like the previous question yes and yes yes and yes yes and yes yes and yes so i think at the end of reading all this what i take away is google does have a monopoly because of forcing in-app purchases to go through specifically the google play store if you also want your app to be on the google play store Google probably needs that for funding the Google Play Store, so no matter what, it has to be there, but 30% is ridiculous. So I'm not surprised that Epic won this. The whole Android app distribution market, like I said, there's a million different third-party apps you can use. If you get that TapTap -tap, uh, Store app, it's kind of like it, it's way better than the Google Play Store. Holy crap, is it better than the Google Play Store? So not only is it just like a place to go find games but if you go to the home tab you can actually like follow creators directly on it you can follow specific games for updates you can see like youtube videos that people have posted um there's like what's the best game in this genre you go to your inbox you can see like if you have new followers and stuff like that like i might start using tap tap myself make an account and if I make uh, videos on, um, like, hey, what do I think of this game? Like, game reviews. My brain wasn't working there for a second, so I couldn't think of the term game reviews. I can post those on TapTap -tap and have people view those videos when they look up that specific game through TapTap. -tap. It's awesome. So, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's an interesting one, in my opinion. I'm glad that Epic did end up winning because it's probably going to help everybody in the end. But, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.